I'm Christopher Forslund of the European Molecular Biology Laboratory, and I'll talk to you a little bit about our bioassays problems and paradigms article about metagenomic insights into the evolution of the antibiotic resistome. What is a resistome? It basically refers to the set of genes allowing bacteria to survive exposure to antibiotics in some given context. For example, we can talk of the resistome of bacterial species as a set of such genes that its genome contains. We can likewise talk of the collective resistome of a community of co-occurring bacteria as the set of antibiotic resistance genes that they have together and so on up to the level of the biosphere as a whole. We can talk then of environmental resistance, soil resistance, water resistance, but also of host associated, such as human associated resistance, including uh, the uh, resistance genes found in the bacteria dwelling in the human gastrointestinal tract, or the gut resistance, which is of particular interest to us because there's some hints that this may in fact work as a reservoir from which resistance bacteria, or at least the genes giving them this resistance, can be vectored out into other body sites and cause disease. Uh, which would then be more difficult to treat using antibiotics. This kind of problem in treating diseases with antibiotics has been growing over the past 50 years or so uh, and has caused notable concern and quite a bit of public debate on why it's actually happening, whether or not it has an anthropogenic cause and what that cause is. We would expect, of course, our medical overuse and misuse of antibiotics to select for increased carriage of resistance genes in bacteria. But we might also expect our use of antibiotics in food production, in agriculture, in agriculture, for uh, growth promotion purposes, for prophylactic purposes, to select for such increased carriage of resistance genes in some sort of farm to fork transmission pathway. However, it's difficult to say for certain, in particular using conventional microbiological methods, since these rely on being able to culture individual bacteria one at a time at different concentrations of antibiotics and see how fast they grow. This is very reliable, but it's expensive, it's time consuming, and therefore difficult to scale up to such a level as would allow a stringent statistical analysis on what the causes behind this increased uh, carriage of resistance genes are. Uh, during the past decade or so, however, advances in high-throughput sequencing have allowed us to take an entire community of bacteria at once, sequence as much as we need of uh, their uh, genetic material, and from that determine, for example, the relative abundances of different uh, gene families, the relative proportions of different bacterial species. And from this type of metagenomic data, it might then be possible to uh, say more about the evolution of the resistance because we'll be able to sample so many more sites and so many more uh, environments and compare them. There have then been a few groups trying to do this in the past few years, and I will briefly mention some of our own results in this regard. We've looked at more than 800 gut samples uh, from uh, human donors in 10 different countries and screened these for known antibiotic resistance genes what stands out as the main driver of differences between these samples in this regard is actually the country they're taken from, which we find interesting because the country level would correspond to differences in legislation, in diet, in food production practices, in agricultural practices, in how the healthcare systems are structured, in market situations, and so on. We see these differences not only at an overall level, but at a level of individual resistance gene families, as well as at the level of the antibiotics that these resistance gene families contribute to resistance to. And we do so even when compensating for differences between the samples with regards to which bacteria are present and in what abundances, meaning we might actually be looking at uh, adaptations of these bacteria towards carrying more of certain resistance gene families as a response to direct or indirect exposure to antibiotics in some context. Now what we would like to do then, of course, is to try to correlate this to individual level uh, history data, diet history, medical history. Unfortunately, we don't actually have this uh, type of data available for these samples because they were collected as part of studies with other primary purposes. We do look forward to coming data sets that will allow us to do this analysis. In the meantime, what we can do and what we have done is that we can look at country level statistics of antibiotic exposure 
including, for example, sales state of antibiotics for human medical use, for veterinary food production purposes. We can look at things like the prevalence of antibiotic resistance in isolates taken from slaughterhouses in different countries as a proxy for the development of antibiotic resistance in the food production chain. Or we could look at things like um, what fraction of visits to healthcare professionals result in antibiotic prescriptions. These various measures of antibiotic uh, exposure uh, broadly uh, agrees with our country level estimates of antibiotic resistance potential in the gut samples. While this is not evidence of an anthropogenic cause behind the increase of resistance in a clinical setting, it is a strong indication that both of these factors, the medical overuse or misuse of antibiotics and the use of antibiotics in food production causing a food to, food to uh, farm to fork type uh, transmission pathway are both relevant for causing the observed increase in clinical resistance. Uh, we look forward to see what we'll be able to do with novel data to try to get closer to the answer to this question as well as what others will try to do uh, in their way and we hope that this research taken together will eventually be able to inform public debate in such a way as will help us to eventually stem the tide of increasing resistance in clinical contexts. Thank you for listening.